is the Fade Five Podcast with Brad Evans and Nate Lundy. Place your bets, you jack wagons. Traffic noise episode joined by the good son, Nathaniel Lundy. It is indeed the Monday edition of the Feed Five Podcast. And naturally, we always have tickets in hand because we're hopping aboard the Hong Kong Plus bus. And what a, is sure to be a... Uh, snooze fest, uh, kind of what uh, went down at AT and T on Friday night, uh, and that uh, certain fight on Netflix, uh, which my uh, youngest son had me stay awake for, and I wasted I don't know a half hour, an hour of my life that I'll never get back. But uh, with that thought, uh, of course, into your brain, uh, let's try to redeem ourselves and replenish the bank accounts, uh, so to speak, with our plus one hundred odds or greater wager. Could be on Monday Night Football or someone else, and I think. Lundy, you're going to avoid the showdown in the Lone Star State and instead drop the puck and make some bucks. So please share. Yeah, let's hope that we can do that. we got six games on the docket in the National Hockey League tonight. We're just going to make a nice, simple three-leg money line out of Boston, Edmonton, and Dallas. Um, Folks, uh, this payday at a plus 139 should be pretty nice for us. Why do I like these three teams? (laughs) Because they're playing Columbus, Montreal, and Anaheim. Three of the absolute worst teams in the NHL so far this season. Okay. So this just has to do with their opponents. I know Boston has only won four out of their last 10 games, which is uh, down a bit for the Bruins. But, you know, uh, what cures all ills? Uh, playing the Blue Jackets right now. That's what it does. Uh, folks, like I said, these, these three opponents for each of the teams that were taken on the money line uh, are sitting with like 14 points in the standings, you know, dead last or tied for last in their various divisions. This should be a get right for Boston and certainly for Edmonton and for Dallas as well. Take all three of them on the money line, heavy favorites, but you can snag that plus 139 over DK. Yeah, I like that juice at plus 139. A little bit lighter juice. And call me Team Raisins instead of Team Huevos. Uh, but I like this bet quite a bit. Let's go to the marquee matchup in the world of college basketball. The late night tip. So things are going south for you in Texans and Cowboys. You can always pivot. Pivot uh, to college basketball. The action is going to go down inside Viejas there in SoCal. Uh, I love uh, the Alt Rock Parlay. Uh, and I'm going to kind of live in the middle a little bit on this as well. Leg numero uno on the SGP. Give me the Gonzaga Bulldogs on the money line. Leg numero dos. Give me the home team there in San Diego State. Jack to spread way up to plus 20 and a half. And leg numero tres. Give me the over on 140 and a half. You put all three of those legs together, you achieve plus money. Even Steven Juice there. At BetMGM. Uh, Zags are far and away national title contenders. Uh, probably going to be Final Four representatives uh, come late March. Uh, but you look at the Zags. Uh, team number 50 in adjusted tempo so far. They are 11 in the country in EFG offense. Shooting 61.8% inside the arc and 40.3% outside of it. They have depth. They have balance. Uh, they have experience. Uh, number 68 EFG defense as well. Only giving up 22.7% from way downtown very good rebounding team they really have no weaknesses i like the zags team they've already been challenged this season meanwhile I look at san diego state uh nobody left uh, from that team last year the ones that really made uh the deep nc tournament runs there under brian dutcher uh number 274 at adjusted tempo uh number 144 efg offense but their calling card defense number 21 so far in EFG defense, only giving up 28.6% inside the arc. That's real, folks. That's un- unbelievable, really. Uh, putting a cap on top of the hoop in 38.5% from outside. Now, biggest question mark in this game uh, is going to be the turnover war. Uh, Gonzaga got great ball handlers. They really don't cough up the rock. San Diego State, on the other hand, they have giving it up 21.2% of their possessions, or so 3.D. Again, they're giving up 38.5% from outside. It's a major concern. And Miles Bird, make sure, uh, you, you know, do a little research before locking in any bets. Uh, he's questionable with an ankle injury. I think he's going to play. Uh, he is far and away San Diego State's best player. This is a marquee matchup. Uh, you know, pop a couple of pills, get out there, tip up the ankle, and give it a go. So I think... I think the Aztecs, especially though, where they're always highly competitive, 
uh, we'll keep this one within somewhat of a spinning distance. So to recap, to recap, Gonzaga on the money line, San Diego State plus 20 and a half, and the over 140 and a half plus 100 at BetMGM. And no, oh, Jeff Goodman, my buddy from the field of 68, San Diego State ain't winning this game sorry with that bet on the board let's get after it with another edition of the fade five number five Numero Cinco here on the countdown. Let's get in uh, some more college basketball action. It's a great week. A lot of uh, phenomenal non-conference games. This may not be higher to list, but I think it's going to be highly entertaining. On this SGP, come with me. If you're buying one, I'm selling some a little two-legger. Give me Wazoo, Washington State at home, on the money line. And give me Northern Colorado, uh, the pride of Greeley, Colorado, plus 15 and a half. So checking that line up a little bit. I think a standard line's at 11, 11 and a half at some books. Uh, I built this at MGM this morning. It's an even Steven plus 100 or juice as well. And I'm going to buy hook, line, and sinker. You look at Ken Palm, Haslametrics, uh, Evan Maya. They have this game between 8 to 11 points. Now, Torvik actually has Wazoo winning by 16.2, but I'm not buying what they're selling. You look at Northern Colorado. Uh, team uh, that already pushed uh, the University of Colorado to the bitter end in a double overtime game. They only lost that by a deuce on the road. Uh, they're in Boulder, a team that loves to play up tempo, just like Washington State. Both are top 112 in the country and just a tempo. Northern Colorado, an outstanding defensive team, though. Number 34 at EFGD, only gave it a 47.5% inside the arc and only 22.2% outside of it. You look at Washington State, uh, their three-point D has been rather horrendous this season. Give it up nearly 36% from way downtown, and they're shooting themselves in the foot way too many times, coughing it up on 19.8% of their possessions. Come up that loss against watch uh, against Iowa, I should say, Washington State, in which they lost by 10. I don't think they're going to blow the doors off of Northern Colorado. I think NCU covers this 15 and a half alt line. Wazoo gets the victory. That's all we need. Just live within that 15-point range, and we achieve plus money, plus 100 there at BetMGM. Numero Cinco on the countdown, mi amigo. Regional play. I don't think you know anything about either one of these teams, but maybe you do. Fade or follow. Well, I don't know much about the Cougars uh, in terms of what they're doing uh, this season, but I do know what you just mentioned, the idea that UNC gave CU all they could handle. Now, this isn't a, uh, this is not a tournament team uh, up in Boulder, uh, in my opinion, this year. I don't think they've got the talent for it, but UNC still gave them all they could handle. So I kind of like the way you got this thing set up. Washington State picking up the victory, but you're looking for UNC to keep it close. We know they just did that against CU. You should see the same kind of thing tonight. So I like where your head's at. Good one. I'll follow. Go Cougs and score that old line cover. Number four. All right, Numero Quattro here on the Fate 5 Countdown. Let's cut to the chase. I know a lot of you tune in because you want some pigskin play. So here you go. The first one on Monday Night Football. I'm going to live in the land down under on the great CD Lamb. And that uh, line has crept up. Open at 59 and a half, now up to 60 and a half. And I still think it's too high. What about the under 59 and a half as well? At a minus 115 juice there at BetMGM. Why am I fading C.D. Lamb with well, the premier wide receivers in the NFL? Well, it's very simple. Last couple of games uh, with a brief a little scattering of Dak Prescott before he exited, and of course he's done with that uh, hamstring injury. Uh, eight receptions. Okay, that was great two weeks ago, but only 47 yards. Last week, all six catches. Oh, he surely crushed the over on 60 and a half. No! He didn't even get halfway there. Oh! He was uh, definitely living on a prayer. Uh, he only had 21. In that game, number 83 in average at the target on the season. Yes, uh, he's number three in total route wins, uh, number five in total yak. And that yak is always a concern because he can catch a, a simple, you know, five yard slant and take it to the house and get, you know, over half of this on one play. But do you trust Cooper Rush? Uh, I do not. Uh, in fact, Trey Lance really should be at the controls of this Cowboys team. Uh, they need to evaluate him because this season is Alva. Uh, you look at Houston, number four in pass EPAD last five. Ten wide receivers have gone over this mark against them. Uh, out of the slot, they're giving up a 126.3 passer rating. And uh, the 21st most yards of any team out of that slot position. And C.D. Lang gets a lot of snaps in that slot. But I, I just have Cooper Rush issues. 
And I don't think he's going to get there. He's probably going to catch five to seven balls. He want to take the over in like receptions. I think that number is like five and a half, six and a half. I wouldn't blame him, but the yards. Yeah, I'm going to live in that land down under with C.D. Lamb. No babas necessary at a minus 115 juice there at Bet MGM. And Lundy, uh, down to order some delicious lamb chops. Fade or follow. I'll follow you, although I really don't give two you-know-whats about this game. Tonight. I don't either. I really don't. I have I mean, to bet it, on it. Yeah, I, exactly. We're we're doing this, folks, for the purposes of this damn podcast and trying <laughs> to deliver what you're used to. I there's a couple props I like. I've got one I'll share with you in uh, in bonus time. But for the most part, um, I, I, you know, I, I'm I'm going to see if I can find something else to watch because I might see a little bit of this game, but I am really not interested. If they were doing Trey Lance, because I'm with you ten thousand yep. percent, that's who should be starting is Trey Lance. If they were doing that, I would watch because I'd like to see what Lance can do. Um, but Cooper Rush, no, nah, man, I got no interest in that. And I think, unfortunately, he's not going to have a lot of interest in trying to throw it to C.D. Lamb. Uh, make sure, uh, Coach staff, Mike McCarthy, have the shortest of short leashes on one Cooper Rush. Number three. Numero Trace here on the Fade 5 Countdown. Let's double down on a Dallas play. And I'm going to go with Rico Dowdle, who is not going to dawdle as a receiver in this game. Give it the over on 19 and a half receiving earns at a minus 113 juice available there at FanDuel Sportsbook. Truth be told, I locked and low this when it opened at BetMGM at 17 and a half a couple of days ago and slammed that over because of the likely deficit is going to occur, and it could be a sizable one uh, for the Dallas Cowboys, which means check down left, right, up the middle, uh, off the hand of Cooper Rush to one Rico Dottle. And, you know, that's going to be typical when you have a noodle arm quarterback, uh, which Cooper Rush is. He's 100% Campbell's, to say the least. Uh, but I like Rico in this category. Arena, Rico, Arena, Suave. Yeah, I think it's going to be exactly that as a pass catcher in this game he's done this five times on the over this season running a route on 19.5 percent of his snaps only 8.3 per game but his role is ramping up Mike McCarthy finally came to his senses and said hey Dak Prescott uh we are done uh, so our season's over with uh Dalva Cook you're toast Zeke Elliott you're also cooked uh, so as a result, we just got to give Rico Dotto the full workload and evaluate him to his fullest capacity. And that's going to be the case. He's number three in yards per route run among all running backs. He's caught 82.9% of the throws off either Rush or uh, Dak Prescott's hand. You look at Houston, seven fewest receiving errors allow the running back position, but five guys at RB have gone over this. They've given up 3.1 receptions, 25.2 yards per game to be exact. And again, with the hole that is going to be likely dug uh, by the Dallas Cowboys in this. So Enrico, uh, I think, is going to cash uh, somewhere in the second half, uh, much like Chase Brown did last night. I've been on the live line with that. And holy mother of God, did that come through? That was a, a thrill a minute kind of finish in that Bengals and Chargers game. So to recap, to recap, numero trace on the countdown. Rico Dowdle over 19 and a half receiving yards, minus 113 at FanDuel Lundy. Fade or follow. Ooh, man, I like it a lot better at 17 and a half. Why you got to be creeping these numbers around? Come on, FanDuel. Quit moving stuff on me. I was happier at 17 and a half. Yeah. I, think I, I think I still like it, though, at the 19 and a half. I think you're on to something there in terms of game script and all of that. You got to put this guy to use uh, if you're Dallas. You need to know what you've got because you are already looking ahead to 2025. So uh, they're smart enough at least to do it with their backfield, even if they're not doing it at quarterback. Yeah, amen on that. Hey, you want some more random 90s song references? Uh, you can get that right now at various pieces that we're all writing at thegamingjuice.com. It's 100% free. We got college football content from Nate Jacobson and Ben Wittenstein. Uh, the Fade 5 College Edition of the podcast drops every Wednesday. Those guys are hosting, and they're absolutely crushing it. Bravo, gentlemen. You're doing an excellent job. Uh, previewing the college football slate every single week. Uh, if you want uh, my college basketball content, I'm going to be rolling out a new piece on Purdue and Marquette. Marquee matchup tomorrow. Might have a little uh, say on the ILL and Alabama game going down on Wednesday night as well. All of my fantasy football rankings, all of my fantasy flames 
pieces are there. All of my sports betting stuff lives on that side, including the always free, always public, always transparent spreadsheet. Lundy does the same thing. It's awesome. If you like NHL bets, make sure you follow his spreadsheet, which you can access on the Gaming Juice along with his content. And also Brandon Velasquez's NHL uh, two cents as well. Get it all at the gamingjuice.com. Click, converse, and cash. Dot, dot, dot. Maybe. Number two. All right, Numero Dose here with the V5 Countdown. Welcome back, Nico Collins. Finally off of the injured list and going to be back in uniform tonight despite the tender hamstring. And I think Nico is going to go nuclear because what he always does. Dude is packed with plutonium. So as a result, give me most receiving yards in the game. Best odds I've seen at DraftKings of plus 110. You go to BetMGM, this is minus 105. Uh, so nice little 15 cent value. There, I think Nico's going to get there, man. Uh, this could be like an 80-plus kind of game for him. Uh, in fact, the lowest output he's had all year, 78 yards. And remember, he left early in that last game against the Buffalo Bills because of the hamstring injury, and he still had 78. He played another 50% of the actual team snaps. Uh, you look at the matchup that he's got. Uh, Kalen Carson's going to be his primary foe on defense. Carson this season has allowed a 76.7 catch rate. 125.4 pass rating and the 25th most yards of any defensive back in the NFL. Uh, you want to shake off the rust, uh, Nico? You could do this uh, early and and really just sprint to like 75 yards, and maybe that's all you need. Because I don't think CD Lamb is going to get there again. I'm going to live in land down under on that 60 and a half. Uh, and you look at Collins too. Nine targets per game, number 18 in total yak despite the missed time. Uh, number two in yards per route run, number 12 in route win percentage. And uh, C.J. Stroud has a 126.4 pass rating, the seventh highest in the NFL when targeting Nico Collins. So sensational matchup. Dallas number 29 to pass EPA D last five. He's healthy. Uh, he's itching to get back. Uh, I think he just goes nuts in this game. So Nico Collins, most receiving yards in this Monday night. Put me to sleep affair between the Texans and the Cowboys plus 110 at DraftKings Lundy better to follow this would have been a nice night to have had one of our Monday night double headers wouldn't it yeah it'd be great so that we could have something else as an alternative uh to get this game out of the way I know it's the battle of Texas and I know everybody's going to be watching uh just because it's uh the Cowboys down there but the rest of the country's bored as hell uh this is spectacular value um at a plus 110 I'm I'm shocked that this is actually at plus odds take it all diggity day long yeah, oh, this game gonna suck, y'all. Number one. All right, New Maruno here on the Fade 5 Countdown. Now, let's get some more action. Let's go with the lowest of low-hanging fruit. Always play the running back against the Dallas Cowboys. That's what we have learned 11 weeks into the NFL season, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here on my number one play on this Monday edition of the Countdown. SGP style, give it Joe Mixon, who is going to be fixing to do a whole lot of damage. 75 or more rush yards in the alt market. Give it Joe Mixon, any time touchdown. You put those hands together, very simple, two-layer, plus 115. They're at BetMGM. And, hey, uh, if you want to add the Houston Texans on the money line, it jacks it up to plus 130. It's throwing it out there if you think that's going to happen. Uh, oh, that raised uh, an eyebrow there from Nathaniel Monday. So, a uh, great value uh, when constructed there at BetMGM. And look at Joe Mixon. He has gone over 75 yards in five of his last seven games. A guy that's averaging 3.05 yards after contact per attempt. Outstanding there. Uh, he is top 20 with 24 missed tackles, forcing almost exactly 80% of the team opportunity share. Dude doesn't really take a siesta. Uh, he has scored a touchdown in six or seven games this year as well. And you look at Dallas, number 30 in rush EPA. D in the last five, five guys have gone over 75 yards against them, and they've given up 11 touchdowns to the running back position. On top of that, 4.55 yards per carry to RBs. They've surrendered 111.1 rush yards per game as well to the running back position. So put it all together. Joe Mixon, make me some moolah, baby. Number one on the feed five countdown at GP style. Mixon 75 or more rush yards. Mixon. Anytime touchdown plus 115 there at BetMGM. Lundy, 
Don't you dare fade me. Oh, no, no. I'll follow on this one. I just think you wimped out by not putting the Texans on the money line uh, as a part of it. Yeah. But I understand you got plus odds. You know, you know something weird happens. Uh, no, you got to roll with this one. Take Mixon on the touchdown. Good way to get it into positive territory there by adding in the rush yards. All right, let's uh, scoot and booty scoot out of that stupid-ass game. But, uh, of course, I'm going to have uh, probably more plays in it. It's bonus time! Bonus time! Lundy, uh, whether it's in the nap-inducing Monday night football game, uh, could be a college basketball, could be the NHL, maybe get some more plays there, or the NBA. What do you got for me? Um, I'll stay away from the NBA right now, uh, as we are seeing, uh, as one of my friends last night in a text message put it, uh, the Nuggets are a G League team without Jokic. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> that was that was what was said last night. But all the Christian Brown numbers, man. I oh, know, man. They're awesome. They are. Uh, it is one of those things you can uh, definitely take advantage of. All right. Uh, a couple things that I like in the Monday night football game for tonight. Um, I think you could bounce yourself to plus 130. And I'll take Joe Mixon to get 100 yards on the yeah. ground tonight. Yep. Um, remember, he's done it five times, if I'm not mistaken, this season, four or mm -hmm. five times that he's hit the century mark. Um, I think he can do it easily in this game. So if you want to take him in an alt market, uh, DraftKings, for him to have 100 or more rushing yards is actually plus 130. I think that's a sexy one to be able to play by itself. I think if you're going to SGP it, do what Brad did, bring it down, uh, just in case they get up big and, and they take him out because they don't want him to get hurt, whatever, just in case that happens. But I definitely think you've got an opportunity to make some cash by playing the alt market all the way up to 100 with him. You were talking about Nico Collins, the play that I like. You're going to give up some juice, folks. It's a minus 120. But give me the over on 25 and a half yards for his longest reception. Prior to the injury, he did this in every game. <laughs> he's had at least a 26 or more yard reception in all five of the contests before he got hurt. It's the reason why you're paying the juice, but I like it. I took it anyway at a minus 120 because I think he will, in fact, crush that number. Uh, two more plays for you on the ice. As I said, there's only six games. There'll be a couple little plays in there, um, but uh, take the over between Colorado and Philadelphia. Uh, from the city of brotherly love. It's only minus 102 to play the over at six and a half um, in this contest. Last January, when these two teams played in Philly, the total hit 11. Um, and right now, the abs goaltending has the consistency of a wet coffee filter. Um, they are letting everything through. They are expecting Eustace Ananen to be between the pipes tonight. His goals against average is silly. Philly is starting uh, Alexei uh uh, Kolosov, I believe, in net tonight is the expectation. He has not started for Philly in about two weeks. His record on the year is 0-3. Um, he's going to let goals through as well, and the Avs are starting to get healthy. The Avalanche problem right now is their goaltending, but they are starting to get healthy. They got Valeri Nachushkin back last Friday from his suspension. They also uh, grabbed Jonathan Druin and Miles Wood back off of the IR. So they are starting to get healthy, which means they're getting their scoring back. They're getting their offensive lines back, especially on the top two. And when that happens, the abs start rolling and they score. So take the over on the six and a half tonight. And then I'm going to stay with the uh, hot sticks that belong to Alex Ovechkin and Dylan Strom of the Washington Capitals. Um, I, I don't think it's the case anymore, but for a while throughout the season, Strom had an assist on every one of Ovi's goals. So you just wanted to pair those two together because where one of them goes, the other one goes. So they are in Salt Lake City tonight to take on the Utah Hockey Club. If you do a same game parlay for Ovi to have a point and Strom to have a point, doesn't matter which one of them's a goal, whatever. Strom for a point, Ovi for a point. It is plus 134 over at DraftKings. Strom has seven points in his last four games. Same number for Ovi, seven points in his last four games. I'm telling you, these guys are attached at the hip. If you're ever looking for a same game parlay with Washington, these are the two guys for a point that you want to put together because it just, like I said, me and my shadow. That's exactly what's happening between those two. Um, so I like those two plays on the ice this evening. Um, if you really want something goofy, um, I told you I like the idea of the longest reception for Nico. Yep. I like uh, Joe Mixon to get up to 100. I may decide to put something together in a same-game parlay if somebody's – I think I'm sitting on a free bet, 
And I think I might also put in there Cooper Rush to have a passing touchdown. Just one. Just dicey. one. Dicey. That's dicey. But I might throw that one in there as well just because, hey, why not? Let's see what happens. I yield the floor to the fine gentleman from Illinois. All right. Uh, that is uh, certainly a team Juanos play, if I've ever heard one right there. All right. Let's get uh, some more action on the board here on Monday Night Football because uh, you got to have an excuse to watch it. The team Juanos parlay play of the night. Uh, SGP version. Give me Texans minus six and a half. So take it. Yar! That hook out of it. Because uh, that line right now is minus seven. And I built this at BetMGM. Joe Mixon, 75 or more rush yards. I already gave you all the reasons why. Nico Collins, 50 or more receiving yards. He's done this in every game. Again, the lowest output that he had uh, was against the Buffalo Bills. He had 78 that when He only played 13.2% of the snaps. Uh, so that's the only reason you need. Uh, Texans should be able to cover the six and a half with relative ease. I know they're four and six ATS this season. Dallas, two and seven ATS. But look at the EPA data last five weeks. Uh, the Houston Texans, number five at EPA per play. Defense, a little sketchy at number 23 in EPA per play. But Dallas, 31 EPA per play defense, 32 in EPA per play offense. They've been a joke. They're like Jacksonville Jaguars territory. You saw what happened yesterday, the Jags. They got skinned on live television, 52 to 6 by the Detroit Lions. So to recap, to recap, I don't really need to give any reasons. Houston minus six and a half. Mixon 75 or more rush yards. Nico 50 or more receiving yards. Plus 170 there at Bet MGM. All right, elsewhere. Bonus time, bonus time. Oh, uh, let's get one more Ben this godforsaken game. Uh, Tank Dell, uh, I am think he's going to pop off. I'm going to take the under. On 49 and a half receiving yards at a minus 115 juice there at Bet MGM. Look, he's not going to be the main man anymore with Nico Collins back. So uh, he's, uh, you know, overall target share is going to diminish. And he's been under this on six of eight games this season. Uh, and yeah, he's seen a healthy 6.2 targets per game, but number 63 in A dot, 43 in Yak, 69 dice, uh, or not so dice, and yards per route run, uh, number 66 in yards per reception. And CJ Stroud only has a 73.1 passer rating when targeting him. So they've not really been in sync except for like the last couple of games without Nico Collins. Uh, Dallas has allowed 12 guys to go over this. Uh, and uh, they're number 32 when drop back EPA D last five. But still, I, I think Tank Dell falls short, especially if Joe Mixon goes absolutely nuts. And that's a distinct possibility. Nico could go nuts as well. Uh, so Tank, I think, will be the forgotten man in this game. Give me the under on 49 and a half receiving yards. All right, let's get one NBA bet. Uh, we got to satisfy those individuals. Uh, Darren Fox. Oh, uh, hopefully he's going to be as sly as a certain animal. I'm going to take the over on two and a half made threes, taking on the Atlanta Hawks. Why do I like this? Well, he's already done this once uh, this season against the ATL. He went four or six from way downtown back on November 1st. He has done this five times, making three or more trays in a game this season. He's averaging uh, 6.2 jacks from distance per game, uh, netting 34.5%. You know, not extraordinary production there, but you look at the Hawks. They have allowed the most made threes of any team in the NBA, giving up 16.5 per game at a 39.4% clip. So De'Aaron Fox, the Sacramento Kings, give me the over on 2.5 made threes at plus 120, believe it or not, there at DraftKings Sportsbook. And one more college basketball play. For you mid-major Madness fans, uh, North Florida, uh, the Ospreys, uh, I'm going to lay the chalk. It's down to five right now, and I don't understand why. I locked it at five and a half. Hell, I play up to like seven and a half, maybe even eight and a half. They're taking on UNC Asheville, the uh, Bulldogs there. You look at Asheville, a team that plays up Temple. Well, that works in the favor of North Florida. Uh, North Florida is number 63 in the country in the EFG offense. Uh, their defense stinks. All right. I'll just lay that out there. I'm not going to sugarcoat it all. Uh, that is a question mark. But they already have two high major wins. They won at South Carolina and they won at Georgia Tech. They run. They put up points. And if UNC8 wants to run with them, uh, that is very uh, much in the favor of the Ospreys in this game. You look at UNCA, number 334 of the country, EFG offense. Number 354 of the country, EFG defense. They're giving up 63.5% inside the arc and 38.1% outside of it. And they're terrible on the glass. So I think North Florida is going to win. This should be by 10 or more. Quite frankly, they're at home. 
Uh, they already have those two marquee victories. I, they're they are an impressive major team and one to uh, definitely watch out for come March if they get the auto berth in their tournament. But I like them and I'm going to lay the chalk there again, minus five, five and a half against UNC Asheville. All right. We are out of breath and out of time here on the fade five podcast. Do us a favor and drop us a rating and a review at your convenience. Also fade or follow us on the X. Lundy always give it to you at Nate Lundy. I'm doing the same at noisy huevos. Go to the gaming juice.com right now and sign up for a free account. Uh, pop off a question in the ask Brad section as well. And I'll get to it at some point this week uh, with that. Uh, we got to exit, uh, as always, feed or follow. That is up to you. This game stinks.